container ship carrying more than one tonne of cocaine has been seized by police in Portugal in an operation to combat illicit drug trafficking by sea. The vessel was intercepted in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean by the Portuguese Navy and Air Force. It's a significant seizure, the largest this year, and in the context of large seizures, that's more than about a tonne, and we are talking about this kind of boat that was seized. Everything indicates that it's an organization with weight in the international panorama. 17 men between the ages of 24 and 63 are being questioned. It's thought they belong to a transnational criminal organization. Over a thousand kilograms of cocaine were taken from the vessel, which was coming from Latin America and were intended to be distributed across several European countries. It's 100 years since the Balfour Declaration, a letter written by then UK Foreign Secretary Arthur Balfour to prominent British Jew Lord Walter Rothschild. It stated the UK government's desire to establish in Palestine a national home for the Jewish people. Israelis see the declaration as leading to the birth of the State of Israel. Palestinians want Britain to apologize for what it says is an injustice done to the Palestinian Arabs. However, the British government is celebrating the anniversary. Theresa May has described the Balfour Declaration as one of the most important letters in history. It demonstrates Britain's vital role in creating a homeland for the Jewish people. And it is an anniversary we will be marking with pride. Born of that letter and the efforts of so many people is a remarkable country. She described Israel as a thriving democracy, a beacon of tolerance and an engine of enterprise. For it is only when you walk through Jerusalem or Tel Aviv that you see a country where people of all religions and sexualities are free and equal in the eyes of the law. A group of British activists has spent the last six months walking from the UK to Jerusalem to apologize for the Balfour Declaration. I'm a Christian, but I come in support of the Palestinians. I'm not anti-Jewish, but I think that we are all equal and we all deserve equal rights. The whole world wants peace, and I'm for peace. I'm for peace for Palestine. Others marked the anniversary in a more humorous way. British graffiti artist Banksy organized an ironic street party in Bethlehem to mark the occasion. Free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! The U.S. officials have confirmed 29-year-old Uzbek national Saifolo Saipov is the main suspect in the Manhattan truck attack. The FBI and NYPD are leading the investigation. They said Saipov rented the vehicle on the day of the incident, but had been putting plans into place for weeks. Recovered in and around the vehicle were multiple knives, the two imitation pistols, one a paintball gun, the other a crossman pellet gun, he did this in the name of ISIS um, and along with the other items recovered at the scene was um, some notes that further indicate that. He appears to have followed um, almost exactly to a T the instructions that ISIS has put out. Five Argentine nationals, two Americans and a Belgian were killed after the suspect drove at speed down a cycle lane in Lower Manhattan. Saipov was among 12 hospitalized with non-life-threatening injuries. Officials confirmed he'd been interviewed and was therefore conscious, but refused to give details of possible charges that may be brought. He entered the U.S. in 2010 via the Diversity Visa Lottery Program. Following the attack, President Donald Trump denounced the scheme. The president's tweets, I think, were not helpful. Um, I don't think they were factual. I think they tended to point fingers and politicize the situation. Security has been heightened across the city as 50,000 people prepare to run through the streets in Sunday's marathon. It's going ahead as planned, and the message from officials is clear. New York will not live in fear. 
U.S. federal prosecutors have formally charged Uzbek immigrant Seyfullo Saipov with causing the deaths of at least eight people in New York by mowing them down in a truck. He's also accused of providing material support to terrorists. As the lorry, which was used by Saipov as a weapon, was finally removed from the scene in Lower Manhattan, the FBI said it had located another Uzbek man whom it was questioning in connection with Tuesday's attack. The response to the incident from President Donald Trump has been to promise stricter U.S. immigration laws that let Saipov into the country and to declare that he might send him to Guantanamo Bay. My administration is coordinating closely between federal and local officials to investigate the attack and to further investigate this animal who did the attacking. Send him to Gitmo. I would certainly consider that, yes. By sending Saipov to the military prison in Cuba, it classifies him as an enemy combatant and would curtail his legal rights. We have to get much tougher, we have to get much smarter, and we have to get much less politically correct. More is becoming known of the eight victims who died in the attack. This amateur video was taken of five Argentines who had been in New York to celebrate the 30th anniversary of their graduation. Two Americans and one Belgian citizen also died in the attack. Another dozen were injured. In a show of solidarity with the victims and their families, New Yorkers were joined by visitors to the city in holding a vigil. Russian President Vladimir Putin began a visit to Iran on Wednesday designed to underpin closer ties between two countries at loggerheads with the United States. Putin and his Iranian hosts are expected to discuss the nuclear deal and regional crises such as the Syrian conflict. Moscow and Tehran are the main backers of President Bashar al-Assad, while Washington, Turkey and most Arab states support opposition groups seeking to overthrow him. During his visit, Putin will also discuss boosting bilateral economic ties and will take part in a three-way summit between Russia, Iran and neighboring Azerbaijan. Russian and Iranian help has proved crucial for Assad, allowing him to win a series of military victories since 2015 and to establish his control over most of Syria. Moscow is also an important ally for Iran in its confrontation with the Trump administration, which in October refused to certify Tehran's two-year-old nuclear deal with six major powers. At least 20 people have been killed and dozens more injured in an explosion at a thermal power plant in northern India. Local official Sanjay Khatri said the cause of the accident at the plant in Unchahar is not yet known. Police say the death toll is likely to rise due to the severity of the burns to injured workers. Eyewitnesses described a huge explosion with thick smoke rising from the plant. Government rescue workers were called to the scene as families of the workers gathered at the gates of the plant. The worldwide backlash against sexual harassment has claimed another victim, this time in the decidedly stuffy and unsexy world of British politics. A far cry from the Hollywood-centred revelations of the past couple of weeks. The head to roll is that of the government's defence minister, Michael Fallon. I realise that in the past, I may have fallen below the high standards that we require of the armed forces that I have the honour to represent. I have reflected now on my position in government and I am therefore resigning as Defence Secretary. Fallon was accused of repeatedly touching a secretary's leg in 2002 at a Conservative Party dinner. He's the first high-profile victim in the gathering storm over alleged sexual harassment in British politics, which has built in strength in recent days as several accusations have been made. De aquí nos noticia internacional. Después de corte comercial, nos da back junto con colega Carl Reuter con e noticia deportivo.